Hey my scrappy friends! So today I have a new layout for you and this is for um, the scrappy playdate video or layout challenge that me and Alicia do once a week. And this week we are using a mood board. I know you probably really couldn't see it on my phone. That was what I was looking at. And so I will have below the link to it because it was from like Flickr or something and I couldn't get it like just the picture. So to link it so you can see it in the video. But pretty much it's very Eastery and very soft. And so at first I was going to use that background that you've seen with the stencil and everything on it. And then I decided that it was just too busy. And I didn't like the stenciling on the outside for what I was trying to do. So I'm going to redo this. And actually, this layout took a long, long time. <laughs> Probably because I haven't scrapped that much lately this week. Because last week, that especially at the end of the week, my daughter was really not feeling well because she had chemo. And so, you know... You know how it is like sometimes just we get really busy and we just don't have the energy to scrap and so and on top of that i've been taking the studio calico color theory class which i absolutely love but i don't feel like i can just tape all the layouts that i'm doing and i'm only doing a couple a week but um between working on that and stuff <laughs> and not taping those when I go to tape I'm like whoa so I kind of feel like I've been neglecting my channel so things will be changing I promise I will be doing more especially after this class is done we're almost done there's like one more week left and I've been loving this class it's really been teaching me a lot and a lot of it is just getting out of my comfort zone and doing things a little different because you know, Wilda has just this distinct style, and when you kind of learn how she thinks about how she does things, it definitely does affect the way that you scrap. So I just use that Dear Lizzie stencil, and I mixed Prima with the um, the Tim Holtz Distress Ink, and I really like that softness. And I just use that edger and I'm going to edge everything and I will apologize right now. I do lots of edging and I think it probably takes a lot more time when I do it than when I see other people do it. Like Chamel, she edges all the time and she does it boom, boom, boom. I guess maybe she just doesn't do it that much and she must have more ink on her pad. So at this point, I'm trying to decide, do I want to use that other piece that I used before as a background and like kind of see the layer or do I want to use that pink cardstock and I decided to go with the pink because as much as I liked the white I didn't know how it was going to tape on and so I just wasn't sure so here I'm going to use a silver pen and this is a Pentel pen and it's almost like a gel glittery type I say glittery it's like a metallic so it's silver and I thought that it would be very um, light, but that you'd be able to see it. And I really like that paper from Kaiser Craft from their Blue Base collection. It has like a wood grain and then it has all this extra stuff that is like layered on the pattern paper. So you almost don't even need to do anything. Now I really don't like that strip. So at this point, I know that I want to try to cover that up. And I'm thinking that to do that, I need to have something to go across. So I'm going to use this paper from Webster's Pages. I don't remember what the name is. I cut off the strip a while ago. And then this is from Scraptastic. And so I'm just going to build some layers going lengthwise, just across the paper. And I, at this point, I kind of know that's kind of what I want to do. But I'm thinking about how much I want to show in between each layer and if I want them to be all the same you know the same up and down I mean I put my picture on it's kind of crooked and I knew that that was going to be crooked but I didn't know if the rest of it I didn't want to be or 
how I was going to do the paper. So I think that's partly why this layout seemed to take a long time because I was distracted because I hadn't scrapped and I just wasn't sure about exactly what, how I wanted to do it. And I really wanted it to look nice and I wanted it to match the mood board. You know, I wanted it to be soft and pretty and thus I used the black and white photo. I really felt like using a colored photo, it distracted from the, the colors that I wanted to use on the mood board. And not that like the colors in the photo were like really bright or, you know, whatever. Cause my daughter had like, I think it was like a purple shirt or something. It's Tinkerbell. So it wasn't like, but the sun was shining in from behind me and you could see the color from the stuff behind her. And so actually I went into my editing system and I put like a blur around the edges a little bit too. And I usually don't mess around with my photos very often. I really like that real feel. And as much as like, sometimes it can be mean that your pictures don't look that great. I still like that. So right now you're kind of seeing me go through some of my papers. <laughs> I tried to edit some of this out because I know that not all of it is on the screen. So right now I'm looking through Pink Fresh Studios. I have a box for or stuff in boxes or in iris containers uh, for different collections. So I keep all my stuff by collection. So this is Pink Fresh Studio right here. And this is up in the clouds. And then I also have some pretty little studio in with it because it matches really close to it. So if I have just a few papers of like another collection that match, I'll keep it with it. So it's just kind of my way of keeping things organized in my head so that I use it. And if I know it matches really well, then I know that I'll, I can use it together. And this is how I scrap without using a, you know, a kit. I love kits and like, I love using Scraptastic or, you know, other kits or whatever that someone else took the time to put together. But there are a lot of times where I feel that I could do the same thing. So I'm looking for a soft color and I decide to go with that gray and white from Pretty Little Studio. And this is just an eight by eight pad. And I got this in like a small collection from Clip Kits. So in their store. And I really like the, the softness of the gray just because that Webster's Pages paper as though it, even though it's kind of blurry and stuff it's still very colorful and as of like my background it's pretty it's white with the paint a little bit of pink but it's still not doesn't have a lot of color to it and so with the Webster's Pages paper being so busy and colorful as great as I love that <laughs> it still needs like some stuff to tone it down and the, even the scrapcastic paper is like a light pink with like, you know, the pink dots and it really is subtle and, and not really me. I tend to use like really bright colors, but I think that's the good thing about, especially this challenge that me and Alicia do together is that we can pick things that either, you know, are different for us or, you know, something that we haven't used a lot. And it just gets us thinking in different ways. And I mean, you know, I've, I've been loving so far doing these challenges with her. It's like, I love having a scrappy friend that, you know, we can talk to each other throughout the week if we're having problems with our layouts or whatever. And it's just fun. I mean, yeah. Okay. So we don't live next to each other, which, you know, totally would be cool. But, you know, I think that's the great thing about, you know, having friends that scrap that you're close with that you can, you know. Just talk about if you're having problems with whatever, you know. And I think that's one thing I love about this community. It's like totally off topic. Anyway, so you're seeing me kind of think about the papers. And I picked out some, that's Dear Lizzie. And I had had another one that was the pink with the white. And I really liked the lighter pink because I thought it went well with the scrub casting paper. Like this is, and I know uh, this is one thing that I'm trying to work on is talking about why I make these decisions. I really felt like the white, as much as I wanted the white, 
um, that pink, that softness of the pink really toned down like the harshness of the white with the gray. And if I had used a white heart, like a white background with heart, pink hearts, because I had the white with the gray, it would have been too much white. So I, <laughs> I hope you guys understand what I'm saying here. So, um, so here I want to add, oops, sorry, I just hit my mic a little bit. I have Pink Fresh Studios, and this is, I'm trying to remember, um, Craft Cross Hatch. And so the way that they name their papers is each side has its own side, so ha has its own name. And this is like a tealy aqua color with just like random like cross hatches, I guess. <laughs> It's really the only way. And I love this paper. And so I am letting, it's a little bit smaller than the pink. So it's not going to go all the way. And I have a hard time because I'm trying to get it perfect. But I only want a little bit of it showing on each side. So because there is that teal color in the Webster's pages, I felt like I needed to bring some of that to my layers but I didn't want it too much. And so here is where I'm adding my white background again. And this has, and this is from Pink Fresh Studios as well, and it's called Confetti. And I thought that the dots went really well with the, the scrap cat sick dot paper, but it has pink, like it has, I think it has three different color pinks. Yeah, it has a lighter pink, like a hot pink, and then an orange. Now, granted, there's not really much orange in the Webster's pages, or there's maybe just a little tiny bit of like an orangey type color. I felt like just a little bit of it was kind of showing, so it wasn't going to be that big of a deal. And this is where I realized that this crosshatch paper isn't quite long enough on one side. So, and I not every single layer is each side is the same distance apart, but I really felt like there wasn't enough. You couldn't see enough of it. So I just, I had to cut that, which wasn't too big of a deal. So just a little bit of it, of that white is showing. And because there's other layers of other colors, it works better than just having like white with white, you know. So I really, really love how these layers turned out. And like I said, I didn't go for perfect each time, but um, I did kind of try to think about the size of each paper and, you know, how much of what color I wanted. So I'm going to use these stickers from Amy Tan, and they're a craft, but I don't really think that I want them that color. And really, in my mind, I was thinking whitewash, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I will speed this up a little bit. So in a minute, you, once I start painting, you'll see. So I named the title Flash Frame Moments, though I realized after I did everything that maybe I should have did a freeze frame because in my journaling, I talk about how I love how I can take a photo and just freeze that moment and that you can, I can remember it now, you know, and how just something simple like my daughter, because this picture is of my daughter, Kaden, and she's showing me Play-Doh. She was playing with Play-Doh the other day, and she was making food and different stuff, and so she's showing me, and she was so excited about showing me. I mean, she had to show me, like, every single piece, and I just love this, the frame that I caught, and I love how that you can you know, with your kids, you can take these small moments and just take a picture and you can remember the moment that you want and not the fact that they're bugging you, you know, about showing you every little piece. But, you know, when she's older and a teenager, I won't remember, you know, she's not going to want to show me every little thing that she does. And so I think these moments will be precious to remember. So definitely trying to remember these moments now. <laughs> and so here I took some more white paint and I am using it to make splatters. And I'm doing it now instead of after because I really want a lot on the background. So 
And I don't necessarily want it to cover every single one of all my little pieces of embellishments that I'm going to put on. And I did use some water to thin it out. So, and I'm just going to use just a little bit of it around the corners and stuff just to kind of like wash things out a little bit more since I did paint. And as you've seen, I had to add quite a few layers that ended up being a lot thicker than I thought I was going to do. And I think I speed this up a little bit more too um, because I have to use glossy accents because as you know, these stickers just don't like to stick. Actually, these ones weren't too bad, but, and I really like the way that it is right up at the top. Yeah, here I speed it up so you don't have to be bored to death. Because this video is a little bit longer. It's 21 minutes. It took me a long time to do this layout, guys. I mean, like, probably three hours or so all together. I did it in two days. It's ridiculous. So I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I did lose a bit because I had to stop at one point. And I realized that I had to delete stuff. So here I am looking through embellishments. And I know I want to add a flare button. So here, as the magic of editing. <laughs> you didn't have to set me through me looking through different things. Um, and these are just the different embellishments. And so here you see I have another paper because this is where I lost a, a little bit of footage. Not too much. But um, I've used the capture tab from I Am Stories just on one of the sides of the paper. And here I'm building a cluster up at the top. I've been finding that I really like to add like cluster on the top or on the bottom of just a few pieces of like scrap paper. So one is from Scraptastic and then the other one is like, I think it's from a tag or something from Styleboard. I don't know. It's just in my bits and pieces and I really like the aqua color and that brings that color up to the top. And that that paper from Scraptastic also is very, has that, some of those colors and so and that's exclusive. And so I have these enamel -y hearts that I'm going to add. I added an orange one up at the top with right near that Dear Lizzie flag. And then I have some pink ones. I think one is already, I can't see it because my frame is too small. Uh, apparently I need better glasses. <laughs> yes, I have a pink one near the captured tab and I think those are from Lawn Fun. Those Lisa sent me. So mm -hmm. here's a sticker that says love the end of the it's not a sticker. It's like this paper from the I am pack of embellishments. It says love and the day. I don't know if I said that right. It's getting late. I think I have like some crappy break because I've been crap scrapping all night. Crafting is what I was going to say. <laughs> On and off all day. I'm on cleaning. So today is the paper issues crop. I don't know if any of you guys have been on and watching that and doing stuff for that, but it has been fun. So tons of challenges, just fun stuff. So I'm using some Pink Fresh Studios like sequin hearts because they're colors and i'm thinking about using that dear lizzie heart i don't think i use it no i don't i did use a sticker heart that's over on the side but i think i already popped that up on dots i use a sweetie pie wood veneer from that was something that lisa gave me that's from an older collection i don't know if that collection came out this year or last year well last year but i don't know if it was like the year before that or not so here i'm looking through my enamel dots because i am almost done i really wanted to keep the embellishment cl clusters simple and so down near that simple stories flag i did put that small dear lizzie and so that brings a little bit of the orange so i added some of the orange since that top since the pink fresh studio had orange i added some orange to and sometimes I do that if there's a color of paper, I add it to different different things, embellishments and stuff. Sometimes I don't. And so I use some Crema, like 
they're like enamel dots, but they're not because they have like almost like glitter on the top. And I use those just because I really like the sparkle on them. They're so fun. And then I use just regular enamel dots. And I think I used a lot of the Dear Lizzie ones because they were really just the colors that the colors just went so well. So uh, I might have used some of those Lawn Fawn ones because they have really tiny ones and I bought. I like the really tiny ones. They should just have a pack of just the little tiny ones. So I think I'm almost done. I'm gonna know I'm gonna write the date and I'm using the Chanel gray pen. And I think I do my journaling after. So I do that later. And I just do it up at the top. I just don't think I took a picture of it. So, and I did add that Dear Lizzie sticker. I don't think I had that in there. So here are the close-ups. I hope you guys enjoy this video. And um, yeah, we would love to see you guys partake in our challenges. So, you know, if you want to link us what you guys are doing too, let us see. And don't forget to go check out Alicia's layout. She did a great job too using this fun new board. And I hope you guys have a great week. I'll talk to you later. Bye.